Hello everyone, welcome to Unacademy. My name is Chirag Gagrani. We'll start off with a brand new topic called the laws of motion in this course. If you haven't already watched my other courses, please do because we'll be using a lot of concepts which I've taught in this courses. So it will help you to maintain the continuity. So let's start with the introduction. So this is the first lesson in this course and I've often been reminded that I give out large introductions. So I'm going to keep it very short. So I joined IIT Kanpur in 2011 and then I graduated with a Bachelor of Science in Physics four years later. After one year, I joined IIM Rohtak in 2016 and I've just graduated with a double majors in Finance and Strategy. So that's it. And regarding the teaching pedagogy, so I'm a firm believer in conceptual learning. So it's a strict no to rote learning, right? So I'll be covering all the theoretical concepts, but often I'll be giving a lot of practical examples as well so that it will help you visualize the concepts and it will help you understand things much better. Right. So that's it. And let's finally start with the topic. Yeah. So regarding the introduction, so what we first need to understand in this topic, the laws of motion is that what exactly is this term called force? So we have often used uh, this term called force, like if you apply larger force, smaller force, this, that, right? So various sorts of things related to it. And we often use it in our general conversation as well in our daily life. But what exactly is this term, right? So we'll try to understand the intuitive concept behind the term called force. Right, so I've just given out three basic examples here. So first example, so you should start getting used to this drawing notation. So if you draw a straight line and with this, so it means the flat surface and often the ground, right? So I'm just keeping a ball on this ground, right? Now this ball, if you simply keep it on the floor, right? In the room in which you are studying, if you simply keep a ball, it will remain at rest, right? It will have no motion. Right. So what do you need to do in order to give this ball a notion, right? Maybe a slight pull of your leg or a slight uh, shake from your hand, right? But then ball will start to have some motion, right? So what exactly it is that you did with your hand or your leg or even your head <laughs> if you want to do it. But uh, yeah, so what exactly did you do it? So you just gave it a little push so that the ball starts to be now in motion. Right. In this exact, this exact term, the push, which you just gave, we are calling this term as force, right? So from this example, all we can say is that, uh, if an object is at rest, then we need to apply some force in order to provide some motion to it. Right. I hope this is fine. This is clear and just do hear my words properly because I'm all just concluding what we learned from this example may or may not be right because we'll finally see in the next two slides what exactly is the right thing right so i'm just trying to explain like what all conclusions can i draw from this figure this understanding of what i see in my daily life right so just keep your mind open for now the second example so i've just hold a ball in my hand at some height edge right you just stand in your room and you just hold a ball right so it is at a certain height from the floor and then you just drop the ball, right? So we are only going to consider this one portion of its journey, right? Till the ball, till you drop the ball and till the ball touches the floor. Of course, the ball will bounce back and then go again and then again and again and will continuously do, do to do so. But we are just going to consider the first journey when you drop it and then it reaches ground, right? So as soon as you drop it, so what is happening here? As soon as you drop it, it is under the influence of something, right? Can you guess it what? Yeah, exactly. Gravity, right? So the ball is under the influence of gravity. So gravity is doing something which is making this fall, uh, this ball fall to the ground, right? And uh, of course, the famous story, if you've ever heard, it, this is how Isaac Newton came behind the ideas of the mechanics by watching an apple fall to the ground, right? So all the gravitational laws were derived from that, but that's the thing for another chapter. What I'm just trying to tell you is that the gravity is doing something which is making this ball fall to the ground. And this something is exactly the same thing which you did here, right? So the gravity is applying some sort of pull or 
a force right which is also called the gravitational force but for simplifying things gravity is applying some sort of pull which is making this ball fall to the ground if there was no gravity like if it was a space right so you can imagine it if you were to leave this ball then the ball would simply float here right the ball wouldn't go anywhere because there is no gravity in space to influence the ball but on earth it is there so the gravity is again applying some sort of pull and again this pull this term is called the force so gravity is applying some force to push to pull this ball to the ground right and and now the third case right so so first and the third case are similar but just consider from your practical example right so just consider yourself standing in a football ground so if you simply kick this ball right so it will go to some distance and then it will finally stop right this is what happens in your daily life right so no no like scientific terms or no technical jargon we are using here just using your practical life experience right so the ball will go some distance and then it will finally stop just consider now yourself standing uh, on an ice hockey ground and then there is also ball at rest if you kick this ball what is going to happen right just you are giving the same amount of push you gave to this ball if you give the same amount of push to this ball what's going to happen it's going to travel a large 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 distance much larger than what this ball traveled right this you can understand it intuitively right so what is happening is this ball will travel much 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 larger distance than this ball but again this ball will finally come to stop somewhere right may travel like 100 200 300 meters more than this ball but finally it will come to stop right so at least i hope the concept of this push in this case in these two cases or the concept of pull which we are eventually calling this a uh, force right so i hope this term is a uh, clear so that you at least have a basic understanding of what the term force means right and now we'll go ahead so the aristotle's law of motion so this guy gave this thing way back like i don't know 200 300 bc or something yeah you can google it to find out what when exactly did it give this so what aristotle said that after doing the same physical observations which we did of course with different objects in those times <laughs> but what the conclusion he finally gave was that an external force is required to keep a body in motion and actually this makes sense right so this is far what we have drawn conclusion here as well right so in this case also uh, as we were holding it when as soon as we drop it so the gravity came into picture and then the gravity which was the external force it pulled this ball towards the ground and so the ball came to be in motion right so as far as we can tell yeah this seems to be pretty accurate uh, conclusion of the observations which we have made but is it really true right is it flawed or not this is what we are going to study so just consider some another example so you have a car a toy car i have no idea why i draw this figure for toy car yeah but anyways just consider it for namesake's sake right so you just have a toy car on your floor of the room in which you are sitting right now and this is the ground right so now if you want to move this car right so you simply just start pulling it start pushing it with your little finger right so let's just assume that this car is a bit heavy like uh, of mass of like 1 or 1.5 kg of course toy cars does not have that kind of mass but just for the argument's sake just assume that this toy car is of like 1 1 and a half kg and you start pushing it a bit with your little finger only a little bit so now you are giving it a push right you are applying some kind of force but will the toy car move with this little force no it won't right and of course from your practical exam experience you can say that yes the toy car isn't going to move isn't going to move forward you are probably going to need uh, either your whole single hand or maybe even both of the double hands to push this car forward right when you apply that kind of force with both of your hands then the toy car will definitely move on the ground right so in the first case as well when you were just applying a bit of force with your little fin little finger right so you were applying the force but the car was not moving right so this means even if you were applying the external force the body was not in motion right so this statement is actually flawed 
right but what kind of flaws are there we'll discuss it all right so what was happening is as you can obviously conclude that the only thing opposing the motion of this toy car would have been the friction on the ground right so we are not going to study like uh, static and dynamic friction right now itself and what those terms mean but just one simple thing called friction right of course the floor of your room is a bit rough and that friction is actually opposing the motion of this car but when you apply large enough force then you are able to overcome that friction right and this is why i gave the example of ice hockey ground as well the friction on this is very 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 much less right so if this toy car was on this ice ground then maybe even with that little bit push of your finger you may have been able to move this car right so what is happening is actually there is already a force acting on it the friction force right and which is opposing the motion right so this statement is flawed that you need an external force to keep a body in motion right and what is the correct statement is actually what was improved upon this concept by galileo several centuries after like galileo gave this in like 15 16 century i don't know exactly so he also made a lot of observations and as we have studied in physical world like science is all about observations theory then observations then theory whether it is right or wrong so he did the same thing as well so just consider this a uh, two way inclined plane right so if you release a ball from here it will go to here 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 and so after some time like it will eventually come to a stop and this is precisely happening because this surface has a bit of friction so every time this ball is rolling forward this friction is opposing the motion right so if there was no friction and if you were to simply release this ball from this height right uh, so now consider this only one way inclined plane and if there was no friction and if you release this ball from height the answer which should come to your mind is that this ball is going to travel infinitely right because there is nothing to oppose the motion of this ball right there is no friction to oppose the motion of this ball so why should it change its velocity right as soon as it comes on this flat surface it will have some velocity right of course uh, you can guess it it will have some sort of the velocity and you know that the velocity uh, when an object right so if this object is in now motion moving ahead on the ground only the friction is the force which is opposing the motion of this object and if there was no motion then this object was going to go to infinite distance so this is what is actually flawed in the aristotelian law of motion that the external force is required to change the state of the body not exactly move the body into motion right because in this case just we saw this ball will go to infinite distance even though there is no force acting on it but the ball is still in motion right so it means that you need an external force to change the state of the body if the body is in rest or the body is in motion in both cases you need an external force to change its state right so it may or may not be in motion even if there is no force acting on it and this is what the law of inertia is also right so inertia this is how inertia is defined the property of body which refuses or resists any type of change to its current state called inertia current state i mean the state of the motion either rest or in uniform velocity like in this case it would have been going with the same velocity to infinite length right had there been no friction opposing it so this is what is called inertia right so property of body which refuses to change any type of its motion of state either rest or in uniform motion that is called inertia so i hope uh, at least a little bit of this things were clear in the next lesson i'll give you some examples and which will finally clear up the concept inertia for you right so see ya